what we've seen is that Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization computes the QR factorization of the matrix A. A can then be written as Q times R. Now, where have we seen that before? Well, in your undergraduate linear algebra education, you should have encountered Gaussian elimination, or sometimes it's just called elimination. And what's that? Well, it's a method by which you take a system of linear equations and through a sequence of steps you reduce that system of linear equations to an upper triangular system and then that upper triangular system is easier to solve. And when they introduced you to this, they may have also pointed out that you can think of that method as starting with a matrix A applying a sequence of transformations known as Gauss transforms to that matrix. And the result of that is an upper triangular matrix U. And then it may have been pointed out that you can massage these transformations in such a way that A really is equal to a strictly lower, a unit lower triangular matrix L times an upper triangular matrix you. Hmm, that's starting to feel more like the QR factorization that we had. The problem with the Gauss transforms is that you know, the resulting L does not have mutually orthonormal columns, which is the whole purpose of the Gram-Schmidt process. Hmm, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could instead compute a sequence of unitary matrices and here we use H because we're going to call these unitary matrices householder transforms. So we'll have Gauss transforms and now householder transforms. And wouldn't it be nice if the result of applying this sequence of unitary matrices is an upper triangular matrix R? Now why would that be nice? Well, multiplying unitary matrices together results in a unitary matrix. Applying unitary matrices preserves norms, so the kind of things we saw with Gram-Schmidt, where you take vectors that are uh, of some length and through the process you decrease their length, which can then lead to catastrophic cancellation, inherently can be avoided when you use householder transforms. Okay. What else do we know? We know that we could then bring all of those household transforms to the other side. So we could write this as this right here. And then again, these are unitary matrices. So if you multiply all of these together, hmm, we may end up with a unitary matrix Q. And then we have something that resembles our QR factorization. The difference being in multiplying a bunch of unitary matrices together, we should not be introducing error in the orthogonality of the matrix. So let's have a look at where that takes us.